Lesson 13.4a, Designing and Conducting a Simulation for a Simple Event. In video 10.3a, we learned how to generate random numbers with a TI-83 Plus graphing calculator. We can generate random numbers to conduct a simulation, simulate an experiment. We can use the results to estimate probabilities. I'm just going to quickly go over what we learned in 10.3a for this graphing calculator. If you need to really understand it and you've never seen this, then you need to go back to this video, which is linked in the description. So if you remember, we the first thing we did was we turned the power on, and the power button is right down here. Then we hit the math button, which is right here. And we saw some options come up along the top, and on the far right side was PRB, and we scrolled to the PRB with this side button. Once there, we hit option 5, which is R and int, open parentheses. It's like ran int, open parentheses. We can also hit the 5 or scroll down to the 5. You'll see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 options here. We go to that fifth option. Now, we key in the first integer a comma. The comma is right there. We put the last integer and then we hit close parentheses. Then we press enter to generate each integer. So for five random integers, we're going to press enter five times. If you didn't understand this, go back to this video because I explain it very well and very slowly. We can also access lists of random numbers on the internet. You can go to random.org or randomlist.com, numbergenerator.org or stattrek.com. Just search random number lists on the internet and you'll see several choices. A juice company is having a contest. There are codes for winning prizes under 20% of the bottle lids. Find an experimental probability that we have to buy exactly five bottles of juice before we find a winning code. We choose a model to simulate the event. The probability of finding a winning code is 20%, it told us. That's 20 hundredths, which is equal to one-fifth. We're going to let one out of five numbers represent buying a bottle with a winning code under its lid. We're going to use whole numbers from 1 to 5. So winning is a 1, and not winning will be 2, 3, 4, and 5. We generate random numbers from 1 to 5 on our graphing calculator or from the Internet until we get a 1 that represents a winning code. We record how many bottles we bought before finding a winning code. So for trial 1 here... I got a 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 4, and I finally got a 1 that represents 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 numbers generated before I got a 1, so that's 7 bottles bought. That means we got the winning code 1 after buying 7 bottles of juice. The next thing we do is repeat multiple trials by repeating step 2. And for step two, we generate random numbers, and I got a three and then a one. So whenever I got the one, I stopped. That means that's two bottles that we would have had to have purchased before getting a winning one. And I did it for ten trials. I could have done it for more. I did it for ten. And we can see here I only got a one right away. So that's one bottle bought. Here's another where I got one right away and another. We circle the trials where we bought exactly one bottle of juice to find a winning code. So we have this one, this one, and this one. In three of ten trials, we bought exactly one bottle of juice before finding a winning code. The experimental probability is three, one, two, three, tenths, or 30 hundredths, which is 30 hundredths as a decimal, which is equal to 30%. We didn't have to use 1 to represent the winning code. We could have used any number from 1 through 5. 1 was easy to use. It was convenient. 
We also could have performed more trials. Ten trials is an easy number to use. I was very quickly able to put it into a decimal or a percentage. When we flip a coin, we have a 50% chance that it will land as heads. Use a simulation to find an experimental probability that the coin lands as tails two times before landing as heads. So that's our experiment. We want to see if it'll land tails two times before landing as heads. And we can use zero for tails and one for heads. We can also use even numbers to equal tails and odd numbers to equal heads. Then we can use greater numbers than zero and one. But I'm going to use zero and one. So in the first trial, I generated either a zero or one with my Texas Instrument graphing calculator, and I got a one right away. But I don't want just a one. Like in the other experiment, I want two tails, two zeros, and then a one. Well, the next trial I did, I did get two zeros and a one. So I have one now for two tails first. I did it again the very next trial. So I have another one. And it was strange, but I did it again the third one in a row for two tails first. Then I got a zero, one. That's not two zeros and a one, so that was a zero. Then I got a one that didn't work. I got another one that didn't work. Then on my eighth trial, I got two zeros and a one again, so I put a one here. Then on the ninth trial, I got a one, so I got a zero. And then on the tenth trial, I got a zero and a one, so that's a zero. Because it needed to be two zeros and then a one for two tails and then a heads. So in four of ten trials, one, two, three, four of ten trials, the coin landed as tails two times before landing as heads. The experimental probability is four tenths, which is 40 hundredths, which is 0 0.40 as a decimal, which is equal to 40%. Remember, each time we try an experiment, we can get a different outcome percentage. The more trials we perform, the more accurate the outcome will be. We finished 13.4a. We're going to move on to b, designing and conducting a simulation for a compound event. So this was a simple event. Now we're going to do compound event. If any of this was confusing, try watching the video again. And if you don't understand the graphing calculator, go back to 10.3a and watch that. It's not a very long video. Have a great day and join me for the last lesson. Bye.